What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. And today's video is gonna be a continuation in our C++ tutorial series. In this video, I'm gonna show you a basic introduction to for and while loops in C++ using Microsoft Visual Studio. All right, so let's jump right into it. A for loop and a while loop. By far in programming, the two most common types of loops, essentially a while loop is going to run indefinitely until a certain condition is met. A for loop is going to run at a predetermined number of times. And these are two different ways to create recurring code that you want to have occur a certain number of times. A lot of times while loops are used in like games waiting for certain events to trigger actions. And a for loop is something like populating an array or a list where you know the overall size of it. So both of them are valid in most applications of programming. A lot of people just end up with one that they prefer more than the other. And in C++, it's just like any other programming language. Um, it's no exception. Almost any time you use a while loop, there's a way of setting it up with a for loop. But they definitely have advantages and a few um, little differences between each other. So let's just get right into um, writing examples of both. Okay, so let's start with the while loop. And uh, getting started here, I'm gonna start by creating a variable that I'll call in, in index, um, and I'm gonna just call it one initially. So uh, an index is, if this is, uh, if you're familiar with programming concepts, this might be something you've heard before. It's essentially where you're at in a list or a sequence, or in a book, it quite literally tells you like, uh, it's a list of different events, um, like, what page you can find different concepts on so um, it's a good thing to know index is typically where you are in a list uh, how far you've gone in a for loop anything like that that's what an index variable typically is and then i'm going to print out just on the screen um, that we're doing this stuff for the while loop because as you'll see um, the while loop is going to run a whole bunch of times and then after that we're going to put the for loop to kind of show both of them working so we're just going to put on the terminal window that this is the while loop we're working on. Now to actually start a while loop and call it, you put while like this, and then in parentheses, um, you just put your condition for what you want it to run until. And for this, we're just going to say while well, index is less than or equal to 10. It's a really simple concept, uh, a really easy while loop to think about. Um, and basically, the first thing you need to do when you create a while loop is add the condition that could exit you from that while loop. Programming, uh, it's not valid to have an infinite loop, which is a while loop that you can never escape. So basically, first thing you want to think about is how do I escape this loop? Because an infinite loop will crash your computer or worse. Uh, in old hardware, that's the kind of thing that could create like a fuse to blow. So. Um, I'm going to use the C++ shortcut for adding one to a value, which is a double plus. And so inside this while loop, I'm just going to say add one to the index value. Now this while loop, if I were to run just this program, um, it would run. But what you'd have is really useless because we're not displaying the result anywhere. But what's going to happen is this code's going to boot up. It's going to see that index is 1, which is less than or equal to 10. So then it enters this while loop. And it's going to say, OK, index is 1, and then add 1 to it and go to 2. And then it's going to see while index is less than or equal to 10, while 2 is still less than or equal to 10. So it'll run again 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in that loop, and then 10 again. Um, so to show what's going on here, let's actually print the index that we're currently on onto the screen. And so uh, the code is going to run so fast that if we weren't using that index for any real thing, you'd never know this had run 10 times. But if I print the index onto the terminal window, if I run this now, you're going to see on the window, here you go, while loop. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that code ran 10 times. It did it so fast that we couldn't process that code was happening 10 times. Um, but our loop executed 10 times. So these are really useful when you don't necessarily know the event that's going to exit. Because right here you're saying, well, we told it to run exactly 10 times. Why wouldn't you use a for loop for that? Um, and you're right. You don't need this to be a while loop. We can make the exact same loop in a for loop, and we will in just a second. Um, but I wanted to show the basic format of how you set up a while loop. A lot of the times you'd say um, while 
grade is less than 90 or something, and you're just looking for a student who has an A in your class. So you'd say, well, grade is less than 90, um, index, go through uh, the, this index of my class and look at the different students and their grades. And if they are less than 90, then just keep going. So I want to keep looking till I find a student with an A, something like that. Um, now let's go ahead and I'm going to copy these, uh, this kind of overall just so I can change it to for loop now. And let's take a look at what we do instead of a while loop to set up a for loop. Okay. And for this, it's still, you know, you start with the word for instead of while that's probably the most obvious part of the formatting. But then this next part is you give it three arguments. You give it uh, first thing you want to give it the indexer value uh, indexer variable. And for this, we're going to create an index that's just called I instead of index. And I'm going to set it equal to an initial value of one. Then we say the conditions we want to run the for loop on. So we'll say I is less than or equal to 10. OK, and this is always going to be essentially what you would put inside the while loop condition. This is saying how many times to run it. So while I is less than or equal to 10, we are going to have uh, the I indexer variable operate in this for loop. And then the third argument you give a for loop is what to do to your indexer variable. Um, and it's going to be in this case, add one to it every time. So if you want the index to like, um, multiply by two every time instead, you could do, uh, like times equals two. So basically this would go one, two, four, eight, 16. There's all sorts of different things you can do with this. But basically, we're just going to add one to do the exact same thing. And then um, instead of this index plus plus down here, we can just get rid of that line because now we have the uh, index plus plus in the command loop for the for loop. And then we will just see out console out the uh, result of I now. And so when I load this up, you'll still see that one through 10 for the uh, while loop. But you'll what you'll also see. Looks like I paused it. There we go. What you'll also see is one through 10 for the for loop right underneath it. So you have while loop, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. For loop, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, so obviously what they're outputting right now is exactly the same because I was showing you that you can use these two loops for a lot of similar concepts. It's just up to you, the designer, the programmer, to determine which way is gonna be the right way for your application. But let's take a look at, let's say it's not as generic as um, just iterating through and displaying the index. Let's say we had an array of values. So integer um, array of values with these square brackets. And then um, we're going to put the actual values in curly brackets. And let's just give it some values. 1, 2, 45, 63, 23, 7, 6, 5, 8, 9, 78, uh, 105. Okay, so uh, if we were to say now for uh, the same loop that we just set up, instead of just showing me I, go ahead and show me the index values at I. So um, if you're not familiar with um, this indexer, which I was talking about a little bit earlier in the, um, in the program, in the video, uh, each value inside of this array, inside of this list, has what's called an index value that tells you where in the list it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And you can see, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, we're getting all of these values, two, 45, 63, 23, which if you look just below the console down here, two, 45, 63, 23, pretty cool, all the way through 78. The reason it started at two and stopped at 78 is because lists start, they don't start from one in terms of index. Everything in programming across pretty much every programming language starts from an index of zero. So this one is actually at i equals zero, which means this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the 78 is 10. So if we wanted that one, that first character to show up, we just say i's initial value is equal to zero. Now, if I run this, we'll get the same stopping at 78, but now we're gonna start from one, which is great. 
And if you wanted that 105, you would just change this to 11 and then you'd get everything in the whole list. So that's just a basic example of how to use for loops, how to use while loops in C++, but hopefully uh, you found that informative. If you have any questions on what you saw in this video or wanna let me know what you wanna see next on the channel, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Um, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. All the support helps out a ton. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects. Thanks, bye.